Hello and welcome, welcome back to Bookmark Chronicles. Today I'm doing my March wrap up, starting off with our monthly stats. So I read nine books, no rereads. I had four DNFs, read 1,240 pages, and listened to 57 hours of audio. That feels like a lot. For genre breakdown, I read two fantasy, one historical, one mystery, and four romances, as I have learned to not not include romance. As far as format, I had four on audio, four ebooks, and one physical book. Five of the books that I read were adult, one was new adult, and two were YA. Ratings were pretty good this month. Really only one of them I would consider a disappointment and that was my one three star read of the month. Otherwise I had one that was three and a half, one that was 3.75, one four, one 4.25, two four and a halves, and then one 4.75 star and one five star. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Six of the books that I read were novels, two were novellas, and one was manga. I didn't read any manga or graphic novels last year, so we're fixing that this year, finally. And then six of the authors that I read were new to me and one was a repeat. So first we're gonna talk about a book that carried over from my February TBR and that I ended up DNFing and that is Take My Hand. This is by no means a bad book. However, with the content, I just wasn't feeling it at the time and I was just like, I really don't want to read this but if you are a fan of historical fiction that i would definitely recommend this is based on a true story about the forced sterilization of black women and girls in the united states and it is a very good story however with what was happening medically at that time as well as a budding romance that started between some of the characters that i felt was really out of place was not useful to the story in any way shape or form and honestly just didn't make a lot of sense because these two characters have barely spent any time together i was just like i'm forcing myself through this at this point and i don't want to continue i think that if i had finished it it could have been maybe a three and a half or four star but like at that point in time i was just like i don't care anymore but i still would recommend if you are a fan of historical fiction this next one was also a dnf and that was every heart of doorway the first book in the wayward children series i tried to read this another time and also dnf'd it then at that point i was reading it physically and this time around i tried the audio i got a little further but i just didn't care i have the first two books in the series and i'm gonna unhaul them both it just wasn't working for me. I kind of didn't care about the characters and then the girl's roommate in this one was getting on my fucking nerves and so I just, I couldn't do it. From my understanding, this series is about children who find these doors to different worlds and it's like their perfect world and so they spend some time there. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. If they do come back, they have a hard time sort of readjusting to their normal life. I think that's what it's about. I'm not sure. If that sounds interesting to you, definitely give it a try. I know so many people that love this series. Unfortunately, I'm just not one of those people. Next, I read Priest by Sierra Simone. This is the book that Chanel picked for me to read last month and it was okay. I rated it three and a half stars. It is quite literally about a priest who breaks his vow on the altar. So do with that information what you will. This is the first in a trilogy and I looked at the synopsis for the next book and just decided that I did not want to continue because I don't really want to read what seems like the same plot being recycled over and over again. So it was okay. I'm glad I read it. I know that a lot of people really love it and I wanted to see what the hype was about and now I know. Not my favorite, but not a bad time either. Next, Robin and I buddy read A Stranger in the House by Shari Lupena. This is an author that she and I had both enjoyed previously and wanted to read something else by her. In this one, we are following a housewife gets into a very terrible accident on a dangerous side of town. However, after the accident, she cannot remember anything leading up to it. She doesn't know why she was there. She doesn't know why she crashed. She doesn't know what's going on. And so we're following the story from there. We're following her, her husband, her neighbor, and the detectives. And there's just a lot of mess happening, okay? Some of it was predictable. And I rated this a 3.75, whereas my last read by her, I gave 4.75. So definitely not my favorite, but I'm still interested in reading more by her. So we will definitely be reading something else in the future. I think the book that Robin picked was called Not a Happy Family. So I think that's going to be our next one. If you like 
mystery thriller with a sort of unreliable narrator, then I would recommend this one. This next book was also a carryover from my February TBR, and that is Daughters of Jubilation. I know everyone has been telling me to read this for years, and I finally did. This was gifted to me by Deshana. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Rated it four stars. And honestly, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it because I really didn't know what to expect. This one, I would say, is a historical... I always struggle if I want to call it a historical fiction with magical realism or a historical fantasy, but I feel like historical fiction with magical realism makes more sense. In this, we are following Evelyn. She's a teenager and she has what is called jubilation. She has these magical abilities that run through her family. However, her mother does not use her jubilation at all. So she has to connect with her estranged grandmother to learn more. There are some things in her past that her mother tried to keep from her with the intention of protecting her. However, those things are all starting to come to the surface now and she has to deal with it. I knew that there was going to be a specific event that happened in this book. However, I thought that this event would take place with a different character. So when it happened, it really hurt me. I cried because I was not expecting it. And also <laughs> life at the time kind of sucked and reading this at that time was not the best thing for me. But I'm really glad that I finally read this because it was very good. And yeah, I definitely should have read it sooner. Then I finally read the first volume of Spy Family. This was the book that Jess chose for me to read and I loved it. Five stars. I'm really excited to continue. I will be reading volume two in April and hopefully volume three in May. Um, those are the only three that I have right now so I probably won't buy any more because I'm trying to read down my shelves but I will definitely be continuing this series later this year. In this we're following a spy who's been assigned to get close to this... I don't know if he's like a... Um, politician, diplomat, something, whatever, but in order to do so, they're like, you need to establish a cover and you need a wife and a child. So he goes to an orphanage and adopts a little girl who just so happens to be a telepath. And then he meets this woman who he decides to recruit to be his wife and mother to his now adopted daughter. And she just so happens to be an assassin. It is a fun time. I love it. I did start watching the anime first, but decided to read it instead. And I'm having a great time. Next, I had an e-arc of The Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton. This comes out on April 9th, and I will be doing an individual review for it. Y'all gotta read this book. You have to. It's so good. It. I don't read traditionally published romance often, and I loved this one. It is so good. It's so cute. It's a black romance with an event planner and an astronaut, and they end up fake dating, and I just love it. It's so good. It's so good. If you have this pre-ordered or you're gonna buy it, read it immediately because it is so damn good. It's so cute. It just makes you giggle and kick your feet and I had such a fun time with that. I will definitely be rereading at some point. Then I was planning to continue the Bays of Juneteenth series. I made it to book four, Mr. Down for whatever, and I ended up DNFing. I think a part of the problem for me is number one, the beginning for the first, I think like five or six is pretty repetitive, but also we were talking about things that like had nothing to do with anything. And I'm like, well, where's the love interest at? Like what's, what's gonna happen here? When are y'all going to meet? I mean, it's a novella, it's not that long. So there's just too many other things happening and I just want you to get to the relationship. I decided to DNF the series, but in this we are following representatives from the Mr. Black organization in various cities and in each book we're following a character in a different city who is getting ready to host their annual Juneteenth event and so like learning about the history of Juneteenth is great and all of that and how that looks in different cities major cities around the U.S. so it's a cool concept I think maybe I just read them too closely together I'm not quite sure but I would still recommend if you were a fan they're all sh very short so it's pretty easy to get through. Then I also DNF'd Working Through It by Kosh Thompson. Now I tried to read another book by her, Sight Unseen, earlier this year and DNF'd that as well. In this one it is a workplace romance where we have sort of enemies to lovers. They both work in a church and it is the FMC's father who runs the church and that's the MMC's mentor. They are assigned to something together and there's a lot of animosity between the two of them. However, you know that they're supposed to get together, but you also know that the MMC has a fiance. That's not a spoiler because it is in the uh, synopsis. 
you can kind of guess where that's going and I confirmed it by looking up some reviews on Storygraph and I was like I don't care I'm not going to support this I don't want to read this I do have one other book by Kasha Thompson and I don't know how I'm going to feel about it but I will try it at some point but this one just wasn't for me I forgot to mention that Every Heart of Doorway had been chosen for me by Lana sorry Lana and then this next one Monet chose for me and it was Beasts of Prey I surprisingly love this it was so good it is very slow to start but once you get going i was hooked so in this we are following two main characters one of them is training to be in the military i guess is the best way to explain it the other is an indentured servant of the night zoo so she's one of the beast keepers there is a creature in this jungle it's like mag magical jungle that a lot of people go into and don't return from and there's something in there that is killing civilians. So for their own reasons, both of our main characters want to hunt this creature down. And in the process, they learn a lot more about the history of magic in this world and what really happened. I really enjoyed this. I rated it 4.25 stars. Alana and I will be buddy reading Beasts of Ruin next month. And I can't wait to see how this goes because I'm so shocked. And I've had this book since it came out, kind of. So I I really, <laughs> I'm really glad that I'm choosing to read down my shelves this year because I have so many things that I actually enjoy that I wish I had read sooner. Next, I read The Strictly Professional Duology by Christina C. Jones. The first book is Strictly Professional. In this, we are following Gabby and Terrence. They meet at a bar, they hit it off. And then Monday morning, surprise, surprise, they work together now. So it's a workplace romance, will they, won't they? First book, I enjoyed it. I gave it four and a half stars. Then I moved on to book two and I didn't realize that it was a continuation of their story. So I don't wanna say what the second one is about in case you do want to read the first one, but let me just tell you that it is to this series alone that I now have enough characters for the next round of characters that I want to square up with. I want to fight everybody. Everybody. I did not like the second book. It's called Unfinished Business and like I said it's a continuation of the same couple and it just it 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 really took a turn. It really did. Maybe I'll do a series review because I got shit to say. Anywho, I rated this one three stars. Not my fave. The lowest that I have ever rated anything by CCJ. Stay tuned for the next episode of Characters I'll Square Up With because I'll explain it all there. And the last book that I read that was chosen for me by Steph is The Blood Trials by Annie Davenport. This is the first in the Blood Gift duology. Pleasantly surprised. Again, rated this four and a half stars. Was not expecting to enjoy it so much, but loved it. We're following our main character, Ikenna, who is training to be in the military. However, her grandfather recently died and now she is suspicious about the circumstances for which that happened. She lives in a society where bigotry is very common. I mean, it's very similar to America, honestly, but basically like is dealing with a bunch of shit because she's a black woman. And this book ended on a cliffhanger. And now I need to know what happens next because the things that happened, I really wasn't expecting it to end the way it did. Even with that said, there are some things in it that I found predictable. Like our main character keeps saying things about this one person and I'm like, but that's not accurate. It doesn't feel accurate. And surprise, surprise, it wasn't accurate. And then the twist wasn't as twisty as I thought it was going to be, but I'm still interested to continue. I have heard not great things about the second book though, so we'll see how that goes. Somebody correct me, this is new adult? Because she's like 19, right? But it's definitely not YA, but it's also not adult, so I don't know. I classified it as new adult. I could be wrong, I don't know, but I had a good time with it. I'm ready to read the next one. So I had a pretty decent reading month, a few DNFs, but also some really good reads, some pretty high ratings, which is great. Let me know if you have read any of these or if they are on your TBR. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.